Hey everyone, you're tuning in to The Reckless Pursuit, and today we're answering this question. How do you reconstruct? Hey everyone, my name's Cody. And my name is Elaine. And you're listening, tuning in, watching The Reckless Pursuit, wherever you're watching this. By the way, if you don't know, all of these are video now, so you can watch these on YouTube, Instagram, or catch it on wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, our new format, we're doing short question, uh, Q&A style things. Today we're answering, how do you reconstruct? Which is just a really easy question, you know, wanted to take it light today. They're now. all easy questions. Yeah, right? it's so easy, yeah. And we have all the answers. Yes, always. absolutely. Yes, no, we don't. Uh, but we are here to try to give something for you to ponder over. We have a special guest in the studio today. Uh, he is someone very near and dear to our hearts. So if you hear any weird crunching noises, it is our dog Doppler for the first time. <laughs> He normally hates coming out here, but he has tuned in with us today. So please disregard any crunching sounds you may or may not hear. Uh, so, Elaine, do you you want to open this one up? I'm just going to sure. spring this on you. We did not premeditate no, this didn't. conversation. We're just going to go with it. How do you reconstruct? Well, first, you have to deconstruct. And we, if you've been following us for a while, then you know we've talked about this. We have talked about deconstruction for a long time. And this is actually a topic that we've been wanting to get more into with the reconstruction. And so first you have to understand what deconstruction is. And it's basically unlearning or relearning your beliefs. I don't think it'd be re, it would be reconstruction. Yes, relearning is reconstruction, but unlearning old beliefs and really understanding like why do you believe the way you believe uh, and really understanding teachings that you've been taught if you grew up in church or you didn't grow up in church depending on what religion or faith journey you're on you are de if you are going through deconstruction then you are questioning your beliefs and sometimes this looks like what like a complete uh 180 where you were right here and then you deconstructed and you were like way somewhere else and which is fine or sometimes you deconstruct your beliefs and you're like Actually, I still feel the way that I believe, but here is this understanding of why I believe this way. So reconstruction is basically you deconstructed, so you unlearned, you questioned everything, and then you're building your faith back up or whatever that looks like to you. You are rebuilding that. I think of what, like a building. It gets deconstructed and then you're having to relay foundation. You're having to rebuild the walls with beliefs that you are holding on to right now. Now, I will say, I feel like whether people realize it or not, most everyone deconstructs and reconstructs all the time. Like it's mm -hmm. never like, okay, I, I have these questions. I found the answers. I'm good. You are all, always questioning whether you realize it or not. You are always being given new information, you have new experiences, you have new relationships, and I feel like you are always unlearning, relearning things. And so that isn't just specific to faith either. Either that can be politics, that can be any belief that you have. It doesn't necessarily have to be spiritual, but the reconstruction is regaining your knowledge or re receiving new information to hold new and or stronger beliefs. So I want to kind of like simplify the process a whole lot, because to me, um, I, I think that it D and reconstruction are a natural process of a belief system. Uh, if you don't question what you believe, why you believe it, uh, then I don't know that you're necessarily believing as much as you are adopting someone else's belief, right? You have to come to that realization on your own. So to me, reconstruction begins a little naturally. Uh, so deconstruction is when you start asking your, yourself the question, why do I believe this way? Right. And that's a natural question that starts coming up. Some of us choose to repress it for a long time, causes a lot of drama later on in life, typically. But to me, that is the ultimate like starting point is <clears throat> Uh, why do I believe what I believe? And reconstruction begins whenever you're at the place, and this will be a natural thing, you'll just start realizing yourself, uh, you'll become self-aware. Uh, that Which you, is an ongoing process. Right, that you are asking yourself the question, but what do I believe now? Okay, so you go from why to what. You know, it's like the who, what, when, where, why. Like, who do I believe in, you know, why, 
uh, but then you start going to the what and the where and like you start kind of adapting this new thought process of like, well, okay, but if I don't, if I don't believe this, then what do I believe now? And it is a cyclical process. It does happen over and over and over again. But to me, reconstruction is whenever you start finding what you hold near and dear to your heart. And sometimes it's finding those old studs, right? Those old supports that like, why was that what I cling to? Why did the idea of hell fascinate me so much? Well, maybe it's because I really have a passion uh, to see justice for those who have been oppressed or have been hurt. And you start reframing that in a new light. Well, how can I help those who have been hurt to spread more love? How can I start to incorporate more of this, this new mentality to shift my paradigm, right? So it goes from the why to the what. And uh, that's where things get really interesting, right? Because sometimes you start rebuilding that. And to build off of what Elaine said, you go, oh, wait, okay, but here's this new, like, you kind of start realizing some of these doors lead back into some of those old beliefs. And you're like, you get in there and you realize, oh, crud, there's some more things I need to unpack here. So you start to unpack that and you build it and you build it. And it's, it's really like maintaining a building, right? We talk a lot about tearing down and building up and all that, but really this is general maintenance. Uh, you know, the whole process is very much. It's kind of like, have you ever like seen a building that's been abandoned for a couple of years and like nature just reclaims the thing, you know, <laughs> like vines grow in, animals move in, like the roof rots, blah, blah, blah. Like without us maintaining these structures, they just kind of start to rot away. And so things start creeping up, traumas, right, yeah. pains, all of that type of and stuff. And so we start realizing like we've got to maintain this thing and maintenance is not just going to church maintenance. Like a lot of times you would think, Oh, maintenance, I have to be more religious. No maintenance is asking yourself what place each of these things serve. Maintenance is figuring out where all these different things fit into your paradigm, into your reality, into your world on how to better, uh, like express Christ's love. And it's not just taking things, you know, to me, taking things from what someone else says is like, Hey, this guy over here says X, Y, and Z is correct. And if you're just like, yeah, I agree with that. You're not actually checking, right? It's like, I can tell something's off over here, but I'm not taking the time to actually go in and look and see if it needs fixing. Well, sometimes you need to go knock on the walls and make sure they're not, you know, <laughs> they're not sounding hollow. Sometimes you need to go kind of, you know, push down on the floor a little bit and see if it's creaking or if it's sound. Like there, there are things that are done, inspections, if you will, to our spiritual structures that we need to constantly do to maintain our spiritual embodiment of Christ, if that all sounds so woo woo. -y the enough. way I understand this is one of my old writing classes, you know, you answer the who, what, where, when, and how. And one of my old professors said, okay, you answer all of those questions through your writing. So what? So what now? What do you do with this information? And that is what the reconstruction process is, is, okay, I have all of these things. What do I do with them? How do I uncover what, what this means to me and how this speaks truth and life and Jesus to me? And the biggest thing of all, just circling back, is this is not something that you just got to nail down immediately, right? Like, I think that there's a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves to have all of our ducks in a row, everything in order. And I think if we would just get comfortable in not knowing something, this is hard for me. If you're an Enneagram person, I am a five. I research, I study, like I want to know all the answers all the time. And if I don't, it drives me mad. But I think one of the biggest things for people, right? It's kind of like the biggest blessing and the biggest curse. I was talking to Elaine about this in the car yesterday, maybe the day before where like, to me, God is so obvious now, even more so than whenever I was like a pastor, even more so through deconstruction, like where I am now, God is so obvious to me. And the reason he is obvious is in man's arrogance. Like we think we have to know it all. And the moment we stop maintaining something, this sentient being we call earth just takes back over, right? Like about that building we were just talking about. And like realizing that like we think we are so smart and yet Somehow we are the ones that have anxiety 
and all the self-afflicted pain in our own brains because we want to control everything. And yet we're supposed to be like it, right? And I'm like, of course, we're going to have all these weird religious structures that we put on ourselves to try to understand divinity, you know, and even what that entails, because we feel like we have to. We feel like we have to. Of course, we have to have weird ritual prayers and such to to try to give us some kind of peace because it feels like we're controlling God. If we can put God in a box, we can control him, right? It's like bridling the horse. Like, okay, we're going to get on top of this God thing and ride this thing out into, into happiness. And then when you kind of step back and you just like, wow, this is like a majestic creature all in of itself. And you can kind of step out of that and say, and just appreciate it without trying to contain it. That's whenever like, I feel like we kind of like you, you, you ascend into a greater realm of spirituality. You reach the third heaven, whatever bull crap you want to say. You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of realize like I am coexisting within this divine thing that is God and we are co-laboring, you know, it in me and I in it. And, and it's all just kind of like a muddy soupy mess that we don't have all the answers for. And that's what's so divine about it. And there's like a peace. It's like that peace you get when you stare up at the sky at night and realize that you are a speck on a speck in the middle of a vast like nothingness with a bunch of other specks it's that same exact thing but internal i am aware enough to realize how unaware i am of everything that is god and like there's like a peace in that and i feel like that kind of helps that reconstruction journey is like okay i don't have to build back all these containers i can build these rooms according to what i need and what makes me joy it's like my last analogy, I'll turn it over to you and we'll close this out, is like whenever you realize all these home design trends, right? I have to make my room an open floor plan with these whitewashed walls. Great insult in the Bible, by the way. Uh, with like all of these specific things to look according to the standards, but the standard changes every 10 years. So we have to renovate and change to match these new standards. And then you kind of go, wait, wait, what if I just want a spiral staircase going up to a weird reading room with a dragon painted on the wall? Who cares? It's my house. I can do whatever I want. It's whatever sparks that creative spirit in me and then that's reconstruction is realizing i don't have to build everything you know exactly like it's supposed to look as long as the structure is sound as long as it is safe and provides the proper necessities we can decorate it however we want to decorate it and that's what's so beautiful about it to me I also feel like within all of that, you're allowing yourself to go through that process. But I feel like a huge moment of growth is not only holding space for yourself, but holding space for other people yeah. to be able to explore their beliefs and their questions. And not only of allowing yourself to be okay to not have the answers, but being okay that other people may not have the answers too. Yeah. What do you think? We're behind the microphone here, but we by all means do not claim to have all the answers, and we want to hear what you feel about all this as well. You can find us on Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. <laughs> we don't edit that out anymore nope. either. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on <laughs> in a package of Tic Tacs. No. Yes. Uh, I haven't had a Tic Tac in a long time. You can find us on TikTok at underscore TRP pod. No, at the Reckless Pursuit. The Reckless Pursuit. Gosh, I'm messing this up. <clears throat> Let's start over. And we want to hear what you have to say. You can find us on TikTok at The Reckless Pursuit, which is the name of the show you're watching. And then on Instagram, to. you can find us at underscore TRP podcast. Maybe I should start letting you do that part because I'm just butchering. <laughs> and then you can also find us on YouTube at The Reckless Pursuit. Yeah, you can find us on YouTube now. To and, watch this video. And of course, Nomads, a safe community for Christians and all spiritual people to ask unsafe questions. Uh, we love you guys, and as always, be brave. Be bold. And be reckless. We'll, we'll talk, talk soon. soon.